Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Brooklady Octomore 11.1, which is one of the newest ones to be on shelves, and the 11.3. Now both of these have been out a few months here and so I wanted to get them shot because I am still seeing them out there. So hopefully you can still snag uh, one or both of these depending on what you like as far as uh, the notes that I'll be describing. And I think uh, at the end, I'm probably going to go ahead and throw in uh, for my patron viewers, probably this 8.2. It's an old one that I haven't reviewed. Can still be found, so I just, just want to throw it out there. And there's a lot of auctions, it's secondary, you'll find that one. Okay, but let's talk about the ones that we know we can get, all right? The 11.1 and the 11.3. The big difference, the type of barley that went into both of them. 11.1 uses Scottish barley, okay? 100% Scottish barley, aged five years in a combination of uh, whiskey barrels, American whiskey barrels. So you got Jim Beam, Heaven Hill, and Jack Daniels. So they'll use a combination of barrels to mature up, then they'll vat them together and, you know, pretty much release it, okay? There was 30,000 of these bottles to go around. Retail pricing around 185, 190 for the 11.1. Uh, phenols, the parts per million there. You know, that's the one thing about Octomore is they made a big deal about the phenol counts being super high. And of course, a lot of people were blown away by the 6.3 and the 8.3 because they were the world's most peated bourbons at the time, just because their phenol counts were high. Uh, but you know, that can be very misleading because depending on when you're taking that measurement can make a big difference on how big the, that number is, okay? Um, if you happen to take it while the malt is still damp after being uh, peat smoked, because again, a lot of times they're running those peat fires underneath those floors just to put out peat. They're not really even putting it out to the heat to help stop the germination. A lot of times they're just trying to influence uh, the flavor. So they're doing a lot of smoke, and then after it gets all the smoke into it, then they'll kind of run a little drying session on it to finish it out. But uh, if you take that peat measurement when the, the germination is still damp and it's getting all that smoke, you can the smoke really sticks to it, and you'll get a really high PPM count. So that's how I think 6.3 did it. That's how 8.3 did it. Because when you tasted them, they weren't super smoky. Okay, I've had bigger peat bombs coming out of Ardbeg or Lafroy, the Supernovas, you know, stuff like that. So that's why, you know, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to that. But again, this is peated to 139.6 ppm. 139.6. The 11.3, this is using local uh, Isla barley. So it's grown on Octomore Farms by the farmer named James Brown. Of all things, this is grown, the barley grown for this one was grown in Irene's uh, field, and it's at like 28 acres of growing. And so they were able to harvest that, and that's exactly what went into making this. Bottled at 194 ppm, so 139.6, 194. Uh, ABV wise, this is 61.7%. Now, there is a price jump for the local barleys. These are usually a little more sought after. Price point on this one, two, uh, $230 if you're lucky, probably about $250 more likely. Um, there are not as many of these that came out because, again, small uh, amount of barley for it. So they were only able to produce 18,000 bottles for this one, 30,000 for this one. All right. So let's go ahead and get to the nosing and tasting of both of them. I've got my little coffee beans out so I can kind of reset my nose because sometimes with uh, you know heavily peated stuff or even just Isla whiskeys in general you know just the back of the hand type thing is not going to get it done for me so here we go let me go ahead and get a little rinse here all right 11-1 on the nose I'm going to coat the glass really nice really nicely oh yeah nice okay it's apricot Apricot driven, which is a pretty stereotypical note in a lot of Octomores. Fairly, fairly kind of sooty, meaty characteristic to the peat. Definitely picking up some brine notes. A little bit of like a smoked kippering is in there on the 11 one. Plums in with the apricots. 
lemon, lemon peels. There's almost a little bit of like a, yeah, that peat is definitely has that real nice kind of like coal, which is just a pure peat smoke. If you ever smelt peat burning, it's just, but you're definitely pulling that. There is enough brine and lemon oil to kind of keep it going really nicely. I'm searching, I'm searching. There's a little touch of mint, but not a lot. It's just really kind of sooty, meaty, briny would be the main characteristics here. And with that apricot and lemon oil. Really nice. All right. There's the reset. Okay, 11.3. Coat the glass again. Ooh. Softer, creamier. This one's got peaches and cream. A little bit of apricot. A little bit of red licorice. A little clove, little cinnamon. This one just had a little cinnamon. Sweet vanilla custard. It's kind of that vanilla cream thing that was early on with the lemon peels. There is a little bit of an almond. Almost like a little bit of almond extract in there. This peat is a little cleaner here. It's not quite, in other words, this one had a little more meatiness, I will say that. This one's more just peat smoke, maybe a little bit of a tobacco ash going in here. Maybe an, even a little bit of a lemongrass on the nose. little plums there's a little plums in there with all that I tell you what I do really like that the more I nose the peat and I focus on that I am picking up a little bit of a meatiness to it but it's pretty late it's no it's in the background but I, I really like that one as well all right so now let's go ahead and taste them we're gonna go with the 11 one I'm gonna go ahead and reset again Okay, 11-1. Let's see what the viscosity is like. Both of these are five years old, by the way. They didn't spend a lot of time in cask. And the only difference as far as the 11-3, uh, as far as the maturation cask, because again, this was Jim Beam, Heaven Hill, and Jack Daniels. This is Jim Beam, Heaven Hill, Jack Daniels with a little Buffalo Trace. So there's some Buffalo Trace matured uh, Octomore in this one. But... I think it's mostly about the uh, to be mostly about the uh, the barley because a lot of those eleven those point threes have that kind of apricot peaches and cream aspect. I do find that a lot. Okay, all right, eleven one on the taste. That's a good point one. Wow. Wow. Okay. Here we go. Caramel sweetness. Big malt. A little bit of that uh, apricot is kicking. Cinnamon kind of jumps in early. White pepper is in with the cinnamon. It's providing a little extra punch as we're leading up to the mid palate. A little bit of toffee, a little bit of a nuttiness in there. Happens a little early. Cinnamon ramps up. You start picking up the brine right about there as well. Again, I picked up that smoke kippering on the nose. Kind of starts easing in, but you get a lot of that toffee, chocolatey tone that's kind of almost right there with it. You hit that mid palate, you're starting to get that, again, that cinnamon, that little bit of uh, kind of like a little hint of like black licorice is in here. It starts, the peat really starts turning. And churning as it starts going into the back end it starts getting a little meaty um, little cigar ash in with a meaty smoke plum there's a little bit of a plumminess going into the back end I didn't notice that early that was actually kind of mixed in with the peat smoke that little lightly roasted nuttiness is in there but again I kind of feel that's more a little bit with the toffee element 
the citrus oil that kind of lemon oil is in there let me see when that shows up mm -hmm. fairly early you just have so many other things happening as well yeah with that lemon oil that lemon it turns up early and then you start focusing on the, the sweetness characteristic you start focusing on the malt that big kind of brooding spice on the mid palate the toffee element that big brine Ugh. and then there's just like dark chocolate cocoa and almost just a little hint of like an older leather on the back end overall that's one of the that's one of the better point ones that I can remember in a while. You know, I remember 6-1. I was not a big fan of 6-1 when it first came out. It actually took a lot of time to uh, breathe in the bottle to actually get to a good spot. Now, 6-1 eventually got to a really nice spot. But this one, after only being opened a month, I would say it's already hitting a really solid stride. I think maybe another two months this will be hit its peak. But really, really well done for 11-1. Again, Scottish uh, barley here, 100%. And there was 30,000, so hopefully they're still available. All right, 11 threes, a little rarer, 18,000 released. A bump in proof, we're now at 61.7% ABV. Yeah, peaches and cream with apricots, nice. Here we go. Okay, that's about how it feels on the palate. Medium, just above medium viscosity. You get the peaches and cream, you get the apricot. Peat actually comes up a little earlier here on the 11.3. Big rush of cinnamons in with it. Cinnamon and a little bit of clove kind of um, ramping up onto the mid palate. Uh, peat is feeling a little rubbery. There's a little bit of a rubberiness to this peat as it starts to grow. And it starts to transition on the mid palate. It starts turning into a little bit of a cigar ash. Brine is in here, but it's underneath all that kind of um, peaches and cream, apricot, big spice. You get all that before you actually get to that point of the brine. I think the brine is more noticeable on 11.1 than actually the 11.3. Yeah, all that kind of custardy thing is in there as well. Lemon oil is in there as well. Lemon grass is in there. That's the unique note in this one. Besides the peaches and cream thing that this one doesn't have. Yeah, um, lemon grass, almost citronella though. So if you're sensitive to citronella, you're going to pick up that lemon grass as that in this one, I think. And the unique thing about that, that peat smoke was very clean here, here, and meaty. Here it's a little rubbery up front. And I will say, I think that's developing in the bottle. Because when I first cracked that, I did not notice that. Just at this point, a month in, we're starting to see that kind of peat feel a little rubbery here. I think if we let this continue to breathe, we'll get past that point. But the brine is in there. It's a lot of chocolate, white chocolate on the back end. I kind of wish it was a little more like this one as far as the brine. But we can't have it all most of the time. So, you know, for at this point in time, I still really like a lot of the good characteristics this has given me. I might give the slight edge here on the 11.3. Uh, but, I mean, what a well done, you know, 11.1 this is. The point ones. Again, I'm going to give the full breakdown of all the details on the point one, point two, point three, point four, uh, in the description. But a lot of times, point twos are uh, travel exclusives, and point fours have like virgin oak or you know some unique cask. Okay. All right. So I think what I'm going to do next is uh, I'm going to do that eight two on Patreon. But hey, if you're not a patron, don't worry about it. If you can join us over there, great. If not, uh, don't worry about it. You're going to get the same video. Uh, just two weeks later, uh, but 
I thank you all for being here. Uh, greatly appreciate all my YouTube viewers. Keep leaving all those great comments. I will get to them just as soon as I can. Everyone have a great day and cheers.